Uh, hi Tony, um, I've come down to see you today um, to talk about the Guild of Horn Players and its evolution from 14 years ago when we were the Cambridge Horn oh, Consort. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you recall um, our first concerts. I do, it's a long time ago. It was at uh, the West Road Concert Hall in Cambridge as I recall and uh, as we always do it was a real blockbuster of a programme. I mean I think probably the players uh, had sore lips for the next week or so but it was very uh, I felt at that time there was something very potentially very very exciting that had already started and it's been a great privilege for me to be involved um, in what is now the Guild of Horn Players. Do you remember when we started um, we were called the Cambridge Horn Consort? Of course. And uh, we were looking to perform uh, some of the London Horn Sound repertoire which uh, hadn't yeah. been out that long at the time and it was uh, with the amateur players of the area with a couple of professionals that came in to do the more uh, difficult <laughs> parts if you remember. Yeah indeed, indeed. In fact um, that, uh, that, that concert is the, the f only time I've ever heard, uh, and of course I, I took part in directing some of it, only time I've ever heard any other ensemble do that repertoire that was uh, on the, on the um, London Horn Sound CD. And then of course the London Horn Sound CD was followed by CD2, which is largely jazz, uh, or ja a jazz based repertoire. And then we got our teeth into that, didn't we? We did. And if you remember, um, for the first concert, we had about 420 people coming along to listen to 16 oh. horns in West Road. I've forgotten. You, you, you've got an amazing memory. The, the, those sort of statistics, uh, I can't retain those statistics, but you, you can. What, what was really surprising and very gratifying was to have that number of people come along to hear what is a very niche uh, genre of music and uh, I think everybody involved enjoyed it immensely and I think that it was the um, appreciation by the audience and the numbers that turned up that really galvanised us to move forward. I, I at the time had absolutely no idea that what was initially a, a great idea, I had no, what's the word, premonition that it would expand into such an extraordinarily diverse organisation as it is now. To be fair, it was a surprise to me as well. I just ran with it as we, as we moved forward. And as we uh, evolved and started to commission works from Tim Jackson, Richard Bissell yes. uh, and others, uh, we changed our branding, if you remember, to the Tony Halstead Horn Ensemble. <laughs> uh, primarily because um, you were gracious enough to, um, to put your name to uh, the musical direction of the group as we started to involve more professionals. Well, I was delighted, um, not only that, that you wanted to have my name uh, involved, my name attached to the group, but also I'm a very hands-on person and I was thrilled um, I mean, conducting for me is, is, is now a hobby, but I was really thrilled to be involved as a conductor because um, I felt very close to all the players and uh, I actually loved that, that repertoire that, 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 that you uh, organised. It was great. We were very fortunate because um, the people involved were very generous, not only with their time, but with the material that they, they gave to us mm. and with um, the work that they did to allow us to, to move forward. Uh, it was whilst we were still the Cambridge Horn Consort that uh, I first met Pip uh, <sighs> because we needed someone to come in to play the um, <laughs> screaming solo in Give It One, if you remember. Yeah. Uh, because there weren't a lot of people who uh, would volunteer for that and uh, mm. Pip came in to, um, to, to perform and 12, 14 years later, look where we're at. Where we're at, yeah. And yet, uh, uh, Pip, obviously, Pip's unique uh, in, his, in his astonishing talent, his astonishing ability on the horn. There's no doubt about that. We're very, very fortunate that two wonderful players and really, really uh, superb composers like Tim and Richard Bissell. I mean, the, the divergence of style between those two those players is superficially very, very uh, small, but yet uh, they, 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 work, they, they go apart in their musical style. And when they write what I think most of them would probably, both of them would say, 
this is my serious music and that's that's my light music and there's a sort of crossover there and I just wonder whether they whether e each of them is inspired by the other one's music but uh, I think that to have a link up with those two composers is very special indeed and, uh, and being horn players obviously um, mm. it fitted what we were doing in our little niche um, so for 10 years or so, maybe 12 years, we were branded as the Tony Halstead Horn Ensemble. And as the evolution progressed, we commissioned more new works mm. uh, and we started to involve more professional players. And the recordings uh, we made during that time uh, are very special to me. Mm. Uh, there was a lot of effort and a lot of work went into that. And I think that it really... Uh, helped set the scene for our rebranding last year to become the Guild of Horn Players. Uh, not any uh, disrespect to you, no, no, but the I was in it. Mm. but the as as you know, the desire was to um, expand the um, ensemble size. So we've got a quartet within the Guild of Horn Players, mm -hmm. an octet, sixteen players <laughs> with rhythm, keys, and percussion. Mm -hmm. Uh, with different players. So the evolution uh, was to allow us to have a more generic um, base from which to do the, particularly the creative and uh, new compositions that we had commissioned. Yes, you're absolutely right. I, um, I think that one of the most exciting pieces that I've been involved in as a conductor is, was Tim Jackson's uh, Spiegelstück. And that is a piece which uh, we, 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 need to, we need to promote that piece a bit more. Martin, I think it's a, a time or appropriate for me to remind you that at least three or four or even five years ago, I had conversations with you in which I said, uh, look, Martin, I, I, I'm not getting any younger. I'm getting older, as we all do. And I think it's probably time for the TH Ensemble to be rebranded. Um, that it's probably there's, there's probably no more what's the word uh, no no more satisfaction or, or, or publicity to be gained from staying in, from the ensemble staying with a name that actually is from a horn player who's well five years ago I was semi-retired and I think it's great that the ensemble now uh, has that different name because now I'm <laughs> three quarters retired. Yeah, the, uh, the discussions that we had I remember were um, were 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 related to how we broaden the uh, the umbrella of the organisation and yeah. the THHE, the Tony House and Horn Ensemble, was a vehicle that we used with generally the same people um, with a, yeah. a, a, a number of horn players and what we wanted to do, we wanted to expand that to cover uh, quartets that played with orchestras, uh, octets and so on, such that we covered our uh, commissioned works and it gave us a lot more flexibility to do other things under the banner of the Guild of Horn Players. Uh, that was enhanced, if you remember, as we commissioned the Spiegelstück as the concert, uh, yes. the companion piece to the Concertstück. Mm. And at that time we were diversifying more with the ensemble and it was appropriate, um, we agreed, that we looked at uh, how we branded that moving forward. And indeed, that branding, that rebranding took place before we took the quartet to Argentina last year. Yes, yes. I was so enormously impressed when I came to that concert. Um, I, I've very rarely heard the Tippett Sonata for Four Horns played with such passion and such in, in real total commitment from you people. The quartet performing at uh, Sudbury was uh, just the quartet and they had nearly 200 people there which is really quite amazing for uh, a horn ensemble. It was enhanced with uh, the pieces that we'd commissioned from Jim Rattigan that had keyboards uh, and Tim Jackson had written a piece, Child's Play, and also David Mitchum had written a natural horn uh, fanfare. All of these were um, part of our um, package uh, that we took to Argentina on tour last year. Uh, and it helped being the Guild of Horn Players, because if we'd still be in the Tony Halstead Horn Ensemble, you weren't there. Um, 
and good. the yeah. evolution has been um, a very good one. But you're still our president. You're still the the, the, the head honcho, if you like. Well, and lucky, uh, lucky to be we're very pleased that you uh, remain so. And it allows you to uh, become involved when we have the larger ensemble. And indeed, uh, you're going to be conducting when we perform the Spiegelstück, which is one of the pieces we commissioned with orchestra as a companion piece to the Konzertstück at uh, St John's Smith Square next year. I'm really looking forward to that. Really, really am. Um, looking at technical uh, stuff for the moment, uh, does the Guild of Horn Players Quartet propose to play historical instruments. I mean, recently you've acquired a set of Vienna horns. Are you, are you contemplating using those for the, uh, for the Konzertstück, for example? We are considering the use of the Vienna horns for the Konzertstück. Right. Everybody would tell us we'd be mad to do that. I think you might. <laughs> <laughs> but we've done much sillier things. And uh, when we get into full rehearsal for that, we will make a decision. Mm. But it would be very unique and special to perform that piece on instruments that would be more akin to those of the time, I suspect. But what I have heard from Pip Eastop is that that particular type of Vienna horn that Engelbert Schmidt makes uh, has some ex extremely interesting features, but you, you've not, you, the, the ones that you got don't have those vent holes, do they? No. No, the instruments are uh, without vent holes, without vent holes uh, right. at our request. Uh, Pip particularly considers that the vent holes don't add to the instrument and indeed detract from the sonority and character. Ooh. So we don't have uh, vent holes in the, in the set Excellent. of instruments that we've got. Shall we have a little chat, a little think about the instruments that you own personally? An enormous collection of horns or related brass instruments like Wagner tubers, which you very kindly uh, lend to the players of the of the Guild of Horn Players. Maybe we should. I think as part of the um, requirements of the ensemble with the repertoire that is available to us, uh, there was need for Wagner tubers, natural horns and so on. The availability of those instruments to hire is not good mm. and the, the quality of some of those instruments <laughs> even less so. Mm. Uh, so we, we now have within the Guild of Horn Players access to um, a match set of Webb Halsteds, the uh, natural horns that uh, you and uh, John Webb designed back in the late 80s, I think. Yes. Uh, we have a set of um, Finca professional Wagner tubers, which we um, purchased two years ago. I think it was, maybe three. Uh, and mm. they are our chosen uh, instruments. Uh, I have a set of, um, of Chinese Wagner tubers that go out on hire as mm. well. Um, and this allows us to um, present the repertoire for horns um, more fully. Mm. And I think it also um, improves the listening experience because on the face of it, coming to listen to a concert with 12 horns playing for two hours um, mm. might seem a little bit tedious. But with the different sonorities of natural horns and Wagner tubers and the ability with a horn to mute and hand stop, you get a lot more colour than you would with, um, with other brass and woodwind instruments. And I think that allows you to uh, introduce a concert that is fundamentally based around one instrument because we have the ability as horn players to produce a much larger variation of sound colours than a lot of other instruments. Mm, certainly trumpets and trombones, um, in my experience, don't have that wide range of uh, alternative tone colours. Um, I, I do remember though, going back to that, uh, that concert last year, the, the, the launch concert of the Guild of Horn Players, what an amazing effect it was to hear that fanfare with the, with the, with the four natural horns and how very expertly they were played, you know, and that, that, that really made, my, made me light up when I heard that. I found it very thrilling. Mm. It, was a, it was a fanfare that we commissioned yes. to, for the inaugural concert of the Guild of Horn Players, and it's called The Gilded Horn, written by of David course. Mitchum. Mm. And mm. it's for two, horn, two sets of two horns in different keys, in mm. G and E flat. 
and it was very, very effective. Mm. Uh, David has also written a piece for the ensemble with string quartet for four natural horns in different keys, oh. uh, which we are performing again at St John's next year mm. and recording later in the year. Do you have any idea um, as to uh, any other any ideas as to any other composers who might be persuaded to? Uh, of course, it all costs money, doesn't it? But uh, but um, I think it's important that the ensemble isn't perceived as 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 only having uh, only pr promoting works by two or three composers. I mean, are there any other ideas on the table for we different we do composers? have um, Robert Peat who is writing for the ensemble. Uh, we have uh, discussions ongoing with Freya uh, Wally Cohen oh, yes. uh, to write for the ensemble. And we also have John Durant writing an octet for the ensemble. So I'm very much looking towards uh, including composers who are not horn players mm. because mm. they will come to it with a different perspective. Uh, horn players will use much more of the instrument and the various techniques because they know about them and are much more comfortable using uh, hand stopping and uh, various different techniques, multiphonics, because mm. they have used them themselves. So to go out out with the um, the horn playing fraternity and use composers who um, are not horn players is something that we are actively pursuing. I find that very exciting. One of the other interesting pieces that we've commissioned, and I'm not sure if you've heard it yet, is the Three Worlds uh, piece that Tim Jackson wrote, again for our Argentine tour, which is for three horn quartets oh. playing simultaneously. Um, I don't think that you've heard that one, no, have you? I've not heard it, no. So Tim Jackson has written for us uh, a 12 horn ensemble piece split into three quartets. Mm. Each quartet plays the same nine movements, but the movements are displaced from each other, but played simultaneously. And it is quite a, a, a showcase piece because cards are drawn, it involves the audience to determine oh, right. which order the movements are played in and which ensemble plays which <coughs> deck of cards, if you like. And it is a very, very um, imaginative Ooh. and extremely uh, clever piece that we recorded last December and will be coming out on the Three Worlds record label um, within the next two or three months. That's very, very exciting. Uh, just thinking about it, since I've <coughs> not heard it, it sounds phenomenally difficult. Did you, did you not feel, sorry, here, here's a plug, but um, did you not feel the need to have a conductor for it? Does it not, uh, is, it, is it easy to fit together? Well, is it's it, not going to be easy, is it? When we recorded, um, we did cheat a little bit because we recorded the piece with the uh, quartet and we then overlap the oh. various movements. So in a recording perspective, we cheated to save a little bit of time and money and the piece uh, is represented by one quartet, but with some clever editing, we overlap the movements to uh, give the impression of 12 horns. In performance, it needs three conductors to conduct <laughs> each of the ensembles, mm. because each of the movements that overlap are at different tempi. <clears throat> so it's very difficult to do that uh, without a conductor for each quartet. Mm. So three, three conductors, you have uh, an ensemble to the left of the stage, an ensemble to the right of stage, and a center ensemble, and their conductors are conducting at different speeds relative to the movement that has been played at the time. It is a very, very interesting uh, exercise in musicianship. Looking forward to it, and uh, I think it sounds uh, a, a wonderful, what's the word, to involve the audience as well. Um, I just love that sense of, um, what's the word, inclusiveness that, that we can do. Let's look forward and say, what do you envisage, say, for the next five or six years? Is the ensemble going yeah. to diversify even more? What we have planned is to record all of the 
commissioned works that we have uh, collected over the last 14 years. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a long project, as mm. you will well appreciate. Uh, they vary from quartet to 16, 16. Mm. with rhythm, piano, bass as required, and that will culminate in a performance uh, of those works live um, with the ensemble at its maximum size. Mm. So yes, we have a lot of exciting things to do over the, the coming years, and that will be enhanced by the commissions that are ongoing. We have a very interesting project ongoing with Tim Jackson and the Northampton Male Voice Choir at the moment, where we've commissioned uh, a companion piece for the Schumann, uh, for Four Horns and Male Voice Choir. That is for a performance in November 2021 <coughs> and will bring another dimension to what we've um, what we've achieved over the over the period. Mm. I think that Tim is an ideal choice for that exercise. Uh, Tim wrote us the first and only uh, quartet that requires all four players to play multiphonics and the three yeah. worlds that we've t talked about where the movements are juxtaposed mm. uh, will give him yet an another challenge setting poems that don't have a, a natural flow to yes. them and I look forward to the end result. There must be a dozen, two dozen, indeed two dozen pieces that we have mm. that have been commissioned for the ensemble in its various guises over the last um, decade and a half. Mm -hmm. So we have to perform those and record them. Uh, what we try and do is we try and do at least one concert, maybe two concerts a year that is just for the horn ensemble. And mm. uh, there are other spin-offs that include string quartets and orchestral um, music, and even the male voice choir um, composition that's in, in play at the moment. So the next four to five years are very exciting. And I might add that as we now have um, Jossie Lightfoot working uh, full-time for us and the LCO, uh, it will open a lot more doors to opportunities for performance. We're looking at taking the Three Worlds piece on tour to Scandinavia. Um, we've had interest from Spain. We are possibly going to the Aberdeen Music Festival in October this year. So there are lots of opportunities to perform the repertoire that we have and commission new works. So we have a, an ever-evolving um, beast, if you like, mm. um, which I don't want to be defined by the musical repertoire that is available. I want to uh, introduce more creativity, more repertoire, um, to make it more exciting. Obviously, people like to hear the the some of the standard, standard. repertoire, but we must introduce that in, into that new pieces, new compositions, and keep refreshing what we're doing. So I'm very excited with the propositions <coughs> that we have um, in the coming years, and um, I'm sure you will be because you'll be involved in a lot of what we do. Well, I'm as I said at the beginning of this uh, chat we're having, I'm. I'm always, always thrilled to, to have any involvement at all with the ensemble. And I think your, your vision for the, for the future um, absolutely excites me. And uh, I, I still feel, and always will feel, uh, thrilled and privileged to be involved in any way I can be with the Guild of Horn Players. Well, I thank you for that because you've been an inspiration to me and you brought my horn playing career back to life, if you recall, 20 years ago when we first met because I very rarely played then after I'd left college. Mm. And um, so I would like to thank you very much for being an inspiration to my horn playing. And uh, it's been a great pleasure having this little chat today. That's very thank kind you. of you, Martin. Cheers, Tony.